Workshop. I'm Ariel Roshi and today I'm going to be interviewing Kate Foster and she's the author of All the Small Wonderful Things and I have a bunch of questions to ask her and well, see you there. I'm great. Thank you for, so much for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for yours. Let's go. <laughs> so can you start by introducing yourself and telling us a bit about your background and what inspired you to be a writer? Yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, I'm Kate Foster. I am an author. Um, I am English, as you can probably tell from my accent. I grew up over there for and lived there for 35 years. And then I moved to Australia. Years. Yes, 35 years. <laughs> are you and taking a moved... vacation to Australia or are you like permanently no, there? I live, yeah, I live here now. Myself oh. and my whole family, we moved over here just about 10 years ago. Um, and so we now live on the Gold Coast, on the, which is on the east coast of Australia. So we have beautiful beaches, rainforests, um, and it's just beautiful here. Um, so I've been writing like my whole life since I was, I think, four is the youngest I remember writing I made a whole book um I don't think it was very good but I loved it I had enjoyed the process um and I've always wanted to be a writer ever since so it's taken a lot of years to get there <laughs> so yeah here I am maybe if you made like a museum like when you when you become like a bazillionaire out of writing <laughs> you can add in that first book and they'll be like oh this is actually pretty neat yeah, absolutely. And then it could sell for a bazillion dollars as well. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspired you to write this book? Okay, so All the Small Wonderful Things was inspired by one of my dogs, actually. Um, I have two secondhand dogs. Uh, I like to call them secondhand, um, so they're, they're rescue. Uh, and Claude was the first dog that we got when we moved over to Australia. And it was like when we went to collect him, it was like he knew what he had to do to get in the family and be our favorite because he he went straight to my youngest son who's autistic and requires quite a lot of support emotionally so Claude went straight up to him sat on his lap licked his cheeks and just followed him everywhere and they have been best friends ever since and whenever my son feels a bit sad or a bit worried Claude goes straight over to him sits on his lap puts his chin on his shoulder um, and I just think it's magical that dogs know they just know how to make you feel better and they just understand so that was the inspiration really behind the book. That's an amazing story and um, so how do you come up with the title All the Small Wonderful Things? Well actually I didn't it's a secret there because um, the book has already been um, published in Australia and England in the UK uh, and that is under the title of Paws, P-A-W-S, which is the name of the, the dog show uh, in the book. Um, but when it was being edited and ready to um, come out in America, in the US, the editor said to me, oh, well, we need to change the title because um, I think there was a conflict with Paws being the name of something else. I can't remember. Um, so actually, it was one of the uh, suggestions from the editing team at Candlewick. So they came up with it because it's actually a line in the book. I don't know if you if you saw that, but yeah. They're... So what inspired you to create the character Dirk? But Derek? Yeah. So um, he is kind of very loosely based on a friend that my son actually has. Um, and he was just such a, he's actually moved away now. So um, he, he doesn't live close to us anymore, but he was such a, a happy, relaxed and fun, welcoming boy. Um, and he was just a joy to be around. So, um, and I think sometimes boys often have this reputation of being um, loud and they don't think. And um, But Derek was just so, so to, he's based on this, obviously this real boy who was just so sweet and so thoughtful um, and just so welcoming. And I thought, that's that's you know I want to put that kind of child um that boy into a book so everybody can see that not all boys <laughs> are big boisterous loud and yeah annoying some of them you know 
sometimes my brother is included in that category and then like let's say I don't know the page gets edited yeah I got you is your brother older than you no he's younger he's younger okay so I have an older brother um so yeah I we can say that we can say that about boys because we've got experience with brothers yeah <laughs> um so what inspired you to create the character Alex uh, well, Alex is very much based on my um, my youngest son, um, and so some of his experiences in life, but also some of mine. Um, so we we're both autistic, so we both have these kind of experiences that we've been through. Um, you know, having troubles making friends and all of that kind of thing. So it's very much um, a kind of a mishmash of both of us and how we how we've grown up and how we've experience life and people um mm -hmm. so yeah quite a lot of real life in the book okay so what inspired you to create the pause dog show well this is based on a real dog show um yeah that takes place near to where i live in australia um it's um it's called pause in the park i think that's the correct title for it um and it is just a wonderful celebration of dogs so they have all these fantastic stalls set up where you can go and buy these marvelous products for dogs and they have everyone can bring their dogs along and they have dress up dog shows and it's just loads and loads of fun and just this wonderful joyous celebration of dogs so yeah i kind of stole that from i don't there. think a dog like kevin would really like the dress up part no no he doesn't want to he doesn't want to dress up no <laughs> do you play video games like um Der Derek um Alex shared like a lot of characters in the book play video games you uh, I don't play as much as I used to um but I did used to play quite a lot of video games with my kids when they were younger um like my favorite is Mario Kart and it's still my favorite now I oh, love Mario yeah. Kart yeah have so much fun with that one because we could all play together um and we could all race each other and it all got very Sometimes it got a bit competitive uh, and there were a lot of arguments about who actually came first. It was always me. Um, but yeah, it was always so much fun and we used to laugh and giggle. Um, but my, my children um, have have um, a lot of fun um, with their friends doing video games as well. Um, Roblox and Fortnite and Minecraft <laughs> and all of those. Can you tell us about the process of writing your book? Mm, of course, yeah. So... Um, I carried all the all the small wonderful things around in my head for a really long time um because it's because it's so much based on real life um I guess collecting all these experiences and all these feelings and understanding them so it took a long time for it to to formulate in my brain um and then one day I just felt ready I thought this is it I'm going to write this book so I sat down and it only took me three weeks to write, which is only really, three weeks. yeah, that, which is really quick. As soon as someone has written a book, like since the last interview was five and a half weeks, but three weeks. Yeah, I know. Super, this is a pretty good big book. Yeah. <laughs> and it does normally take writers much, much longer to write their, especially their first drafts. Because you're kind of battling with all the scenes in your head and putting them in order. And so it can be quite hard, that first draft. But I think because I had thought about this book for such a long time, it was ready. It just kind of fell out onto the page um, and it was so much fun and I enjoyed writing it so, so much. Um, and then um, it went off to readers and um, editors so I could get feedback. Um, so it was a very quick process but saying that it then took about 18 months before um, it actually was published in Australia so it takes quite a long time for it to become an actual book True. so yeah that was the process <laughs> so then what message or te theme do you hope readers especially like like readers who like to read books of course like what message or theme would you like to give them um, I think through all the small, wonderful things, um, I would love people to um, always consider what's going on in another person's life. Like, just because we see the way people behave on the outside, it doesn't always mean that we know what's going on on the inside and at home and personally with them. So I hope that people would take away this message of um, thinking, taking their time, 
and just approaching everybody with kindness and understanding. So that that would be my goal for that book, I think. Well, like when you think like that, I mean, the if they're trying to like impress people or be like, or like, I don't know, for, I think that if you just talk to them kindly, like kindness kills everything. I agree. I agree. I think if we could just be, if we could just be a bit more, um, take time to listen and really think about how other people feel. Um, and sometimes that our words, you know, we sometimes we make mistakes and perhaps we say something we don't mean. Um, and it just takes a bit of patience to understand that and talking about it really does help. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're right. Kindness does. It kills all of the, all the bad things. So like the guy's going to be like, why is he being nice to me? I was just bullying him. And then they're going to be like, oh, well. Let's yeah, but I think you're right. Absolutely. Um, and sometimes, you know, bullies, um, there's a reason that they, they choose that behavior. Um, and it's not a good thing to do and we shouldn't accept it. But sometimes if we try to understand where um, somebody's coming from and what's happening in their life, we can, yeah, we can make it better and we can help them too. So yeah, you've, you're perfect. You've said that perfectly. Um, so... If you could give one piece of advice to kids who are writing books or just kids, really, um, for kids who want to be authors, what would it be? Well, it's kind of two pieces of advice, if I'm allowed to sneak two in. I would say read, 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 because that is the best way to understand um, stories and um, characters' voices and journeys that they go on. Um, and books change over time. So um, what's cool and trendy in one year could be totally different the next. So it's really important to read as widely as possible and to just keep picking up new books and to really understand the craft of, of telling a, a super good story. Um, but also enjoy it. You've got to enjoy the process of writing because you know what? When you write a book and you become an author, you have to read your books over and over again. Oh, my goodness. To the point where you just think, I don't want to read it again. Please take it away from me. I don't think I'm ever going to feel that about a book. <laughs> I've read Harry Potter so many times. Have you? Yes. And I've read a bunch of books so many times, including yours, and but I just seem to never get tired. Even sometimes I like, sometimes before I turn a page, I'm like, okay, here's what's going to happen next. I'm going to guess the next sentence. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. And you're right, you know, I've read lots of books over and over again because I just enjoy um, knowing what's going to happen and feeling all those same emotions again. But I think when you're writing your own books, you have to enjoy it. You have to really enjoy the whole process of making up characters and sending them on these invent adventures and um, kind of like ruining their lives for a little bit and then making it all better <laughs> because you do have to reread that book and you have to perfect that book over and over again. So, yeah, enjoy. Enjoy the process because it is so much fun. Okay. So speaking of advice, if you could travel back in time and give yourself a piece of advice, what on earth would it be? Goodness me. I think it would be to kind of believe in myself a bit more. Um, but I think that's probably a piece of advice an awful lot of grown-ups would give to their younger selves. Um, but then I kind of think about, like, if I ch went back and gave myself advice or changed my life, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I kind of, I don't know if I would want to go back and give myself any advice okay. if I'm you yes. know no. that's a pretty good choice but <laughs> if I were if it were me then I would probably um on that before I went back in time I would probably research the winning lottery numbers for the few last few weeks and then I'd go and <laughs> tell myself to buy them <laughs> I mean like, obviously that yeah obviously that that's um <laughs> that's a brilliant um idea as well but then I also think if I had won the lottery when I was 10, would I be an author now? Would I be telling these stories to, and speaking to you? Would I have this opportunity to chat with you and, and loads of other kids around the world about books and kindness and friendship and 
yeah it's a it's one of those things isn't it that I would I don't know if I'd want to mess around with with history well then bring a ice cream sundae thing from your from your time and you can hear yourself and ice cream sundae is not going to do anything except let yourself have amazing things I mean that's or a slice of cake could I just maybe a big piece of you know, chocolate cake. Can I take that back? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> Either way, or maybe you know what? Just like I don't know, take a bunch of pictures or something, or just let yourself know that you are not going to fail. Very good. That's and you're right. Absolutely. And that's the thing, isn't it? To just keep going, keep persevering, keep believing in yourself, and you know, it's um. I think life kind of. You find your own path in the end. Sometimes it takes longer for some people. Um, so, yeah, that's very good. You've given me a lot of wisdom there. Lots of things to think about. Thank you. Well, what, what do you enjoy doing for fun? Other than reading. I know reading is always on that. If you don't like to read, then you cannot be an author. <laughs> I agree. Good. Absolutely. That, so reading, yeah, I'm always reading a book if I'm, you know, if I have time um, to kick back out in the sunshine or I love to read before I go to sleep. It's very relaxing. But I love dogs, as you have probably guessed. And I have two of my own who are sunbathing, funnily enough, at the moment out in the in the backyard. Um, so I love taking my dogs for walks on the beach, in the park. Um, I love nature and wildlife. So I love walking in the in the rainforest. Um, I- so if your book characters were turned into real live people, and it's not just in a book. Okay, yeah. Then who would you invite to a dinner party and why not? Just honestly, and this, you know, I would just invite all the dogs to my my party, you know? You'd probably have to, instead of plates, you just have to throw all the food on the ground. Exactly. In yeah, we would, just, we would just sit out in the backyard maybe and we would just, you know, just share our treats and and our food and yeah it would it would really just be all the dogs um from the book they would I would bring them all to life and you might want to use some showgrounds because that's a lot from that probably too many for my backyard um but yeah I would I would try and yeah go to the field or somewhere and yeah maybe that's a great idea for a book well, maybe party. like maybe there was this maybe there's a camp in the rainforest or something yes yeah that's a thought got me thinking now of different places that I could Ooh, you my do another with. book where they have a trip to Australia and then they get lost mm-hmm. like I wanted to so that I could pretend I was a book character having an adventure and then you could pretend to ruin their life ta-da we're not ruining your life you get a million dollars <laughs> I mean, that's that's the book. There you go. You've just given me more inspiration for <laughs> the next book. <laughs> I love it. So, yes, yeah, so the dogs, I'm afraid, that would be my choice. I would bring all the dogs to life and I would I would hang out with them and have a, a doggy dinner party. So if your books were created into a movie, would you change any details? Would you change the main characters? It's a hard one because I don't know. Like, I think... If it was made into a movie, um, it would be awesome. That's the first thing I'm going to say. Uh, and second, I think I would love to have Alex played by an autistic boy. So I think it would be really important for an autistic actor to be able to play an autistic character. So it's very authentic and very real. It would um, make it much easier. They would really understand the character and they would be able to become them, you know, on the screen. And it would be so important for viewers at home to understand and and be able to see how brilliant it is to be autistic, but also how difficult it is at the same time. So that would be probably my biggest wish for if it was made into a movie or a TV show. So if you were stranded on an island with nothing but your own self and your dogs, Always yeah. put in the dogs. Yeah, of course. Which one of your characters would you choose to come with you okay. to magically summon? You can choose up to three. Okay, up to three? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I think I'd have to probably um, have mum, uh, the character of mum, because she's just very good at ordering, organising, ordering, cleaning, sorting, cooking. Yeah, so she would have to come so she could look after me um and and the dogs absolutely because you know like mum 
or dad, you know, for real, you know, we all need them. So that was probably my, my first choice. Um, I can't choose dogs, I know. So, um, ah, maybe Alex is um art teacher because she's quite grumpy, isn't she? But she's done a lot of things. So she'd probably have a lot of really interesting stories, fascinating stories to tell about people she's met and places she's travelled. So... I think she would be a really good person to have. Um, and probably, like, I'd have to have Alex, obviously, and great fun to be around. So, yeah, those three. You know what would be really cool? If the Desert Island is actually a video game and then some other people are playing and then they have to get you out. Oh, whoa. Now that's a good idea, isn't it? And mm -hmm. wouldn't it be cool if that desert island was the video game, but there were other books like set on there. So you've got all the small, wonderful things, but there's characters from other books that people are playing, those characters who are turning up on the desert island as well. <gasps> Ooh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's a thought. <laughs> so, we're coming up with a lot of good ideas. So are you going to write more books? 100%. Yeah, I've got... More books, I've already got more books published in Australia um, and more coming out in the UK. I'm not allowed to talk about a very secret thing that might be happening in the US, but there might be more books coming in the US. Maybe, I'm not sure. I can't say. Um, but yes, there's definitely more books. And right now there's something popping up saying we're out of time. Gosh, that went so quick. Oh exactly. I think that was barely two minutes. I know. And I didn't get to ask you any questions. I was going to ask you, like, you know, who was your favorite character in the book? Oh, well, my have to, I have to say my favorite character was that cute little dog, the skinny one. What was the name? Dirt oh, um, oh, um, Vinny. Yes, Vinny. Yeah. She, she's so playful and <laughs> yip, yap, yap on a gloomy day. She's the only thing you yeah, Vinny was super, super joyful dog. Absolutely. And so if you were going on a desert island, obviously you'd take Vinny. Um, who else would you take from the book? Who else would I take? Yeah, I know. It's a hard question. You asked me, so now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'd take Minty. She's very lovely and she'd help us calm down and sort things out. Yes, you're right. Absolutely. Yes, Mindy is, um, yeah, she is lovely. She I agree. Could have distracting me from the fact that I'm stranded on a desert island without book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, well, maybe you could just take, instead of a person, just take some book. Do a swap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, um, thank you for your time. It's actually up for two minutes left. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Amazing. And thank you so much. I'm so I'm just very privileged to have met you and talked to you and that you read my book and you liked it. So thank you. I've had a lovely time. Thank you so much. Um, oh, my goodness. 30 seconds. We better go. We better go. Okay. Nice to meet Bye. you. Catch you later. Bye.